We celebrate this, uh, this day, we remember St. Henry and, and this day of uh, ordinary time as well. And, uh, you know, today we're continuing to hear from Isaiah about this judgment on the oppressors of Israel. And here, God, God's words to the prophets are kind of going from addressing the people themselves to uh, addressing those nations gathered around them as well. And that he, you know, his patience with what they are doing with, with their aggression toward God's people is not unlimited. So he says, woe to Assyria, you know, and, he's, and then he, he goes on in this way. And this whole reading is part of a buildup to a prophecy that I think most of us are more familiar with. I think probably many of us, as we hear uh, like today's reading, we're kind of a little bit lost, but this is actually building up very soon to the Emmanuel prophecy, where God says that he will uh, that, that there will be a child born of a virgin, and that this child will be a great ruler in Israel. And so that is actually coming very, very soon in the next, uh, next few passages, this prophecy of Emmanuel. And as we heard in this reading, though, a general kind of tone, a general kind of quality of it is this kind of trust in one's own power, trusting in oneself. And Israel struggled with, uh, with how much they would rely on God versus relying on themselves or relying on alliances they had made. And so today I, I just ask us to think about whether God is really first in our life, that do we place him above our other decisions and considerations? And so often for us, God is kind of like uh, an, an idol that we turn to or they would have turned to in ancient times after we've already made our plans. And what would be best would be that we would ask him to guide us in every sense and every aspect of our lives, that he would guide our inspirations, that he would truly help us to place ourselves completely at his service. And that is really hard to do. You know, it's really challenging to do that. And I think that that is suggested as well in some ways in our gospel. And today we're hearing Jesus thank his father. Uh, it says, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. And he says, you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, yet you have revealed them to the childlike. And so what are these things? Well, we don't know. We don't know. I mean, I really can't tell you what these things are, but the most likely explanation is the mysteries of the redemption of the human race. Because in the context where Jesus is thanking his father publicly, he has been in dialogue with the scribes and the Pharisees who don't see Jesus as the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies of the hope of Israel. But I think going a little farther with that, uh, you, know, he, you know, he talks about, he talks about who knows the father, who knows the son. And I think we have to keep going back to realizing that the Son of God, Jesus, reveals the Father to us. And then in that revelation, we have the Holy Spirit. And, you know, and then this word is used referring to those to whom the mystery is revealed. Uh, the Greek word is nepios, nepios, which means an infant or a little child. And that we're called to have a this, the simplicity of a child in being able to receive the gifts of the kingdom of God. You know, you know that when you have little, you have little children, 
I mean, you have your grand grandchildren, you know, all that. You know, you know that they they trust. You know, when they see you as a trustworthy person, they believe very easily, and that is 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 uh, we're asked to let that continue to form our behavior, to form our choices. So today, I ask you, as we continue with this week, that are we able to be a nepius in the kingdom of God? Do we accept what God has given us in the church? Do we accept the commandments? Do we accept the teachings in trust as an act of love? Do we receive those as things we believe and practice? Or are we better than those things? Are we standing in judgment of those things? As so many cafeteria Catholics, I think, as they say sometimes would be. Oh, this teaching is good. Well, this teaching is not that good because, you know, I know much, much better than that. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, but do we allow ourselves to be nepios in the kingdom of God just to, to hear our Father speaking through the church and say, I believe and I will try to practice?